Hello, everybody, and welcome. I'm so glad that you are spending your lunchtime with us this morning, this afternoon, on doing what you love. And doing what you love means starting a business, then you are in the correct webinar. Uh, we're really glad that you were able to join us here today. Um, it's a webinar, but we've also decided to live stream. So if you're live streaming with us, let us know if you have any questions. We'll be getting back to you. We're really excited to be talking about this subject today. I'm literally just back from Seattle, have a little bit of jet lag, but enjoyed a conference talking about entrepreneurship and what are some of the great resources and things that we have to share with entrepreneurs as you start your business. And I'm happy to say that a lot of the information that we have in the webinar today will be going over that. And it will really be able to help you have some of the key tools, some of the key resources that you need to start your business. Just a few logistics if you've joined us on the webinar. Uh, everybody will be in listen-only mode. Uh, if you have questions throughout, uh, we have Janine uh, who will be assisting with questions this afternoon. And uh, feel free to type your question into the chat window and we'll be getting back to you. If you're on Facebook, feel free to send it to us on Facebook and we'll try to answer those questions for you live. Um, and we're going to be moderating the session. It's actually, unfortunately, Jackie has decided to do our social media, so it's going to be Janine. Uh, we will have the PowerPoint ready and available on our website at the end of this week, so you'll be able to get a copy of the slides. And so with that, if you have additional questions about what it is that you love about starting a business, feel free to reach out to us, 703-228-0808, or drop us a line online, and we'd be more than willing to keep the conversation going. Because like I like to say to everybody, we don't go away. We are here for you. <laughs> and with that, you may be wondering, who is this lady that stands before you today? My name is Tara Palacios, and I'm the director of Arlington County's small business program called BizLaunch. We've been doing BizLaunch, I founded BizLaunch in 2002, and since then, over 50,000 people have been through our doors, either the BizLaunch in Espanol program, which Lourdes Morales, who's here on the FaceTime <laughs> with us, uh, works with clients as well as I. We do programs, we do workshops, and we, we're really, really happy to be in this space because we believe entrepreneurs really bring so much to the community. We're part of Arlington Economic Development, but like we like to say, it doesn't matter where you are or where you're from, you're an entrepreneur, and so we're here to help you. So let's jump in. I want to get through lunch, and we want to go through this. We're going to try to make maximize this experience, so you can follow along also on Twitter, Facebook, and the webinar itself. Get the most out of today's program. So we'll jump in. Oh, who is this young man? <laughs> this young man represents what I hope is all of you. It may be a different industry sector. It may be something different. But he obviously, you can tell from the jump, he is doing what he loves. He set up himself a lemonade stand. Looks like he's got a great marketing plan. I question the amount, the 25 cents, who knows. But he is doing what he loves, and you can tell just by the image that you see. And so we want to share with you, how do you take that dream and make it into a reality? And you want to be an entrepreneur. That's what that is. You know, I have people that will come and they'll say to me, oh, Tara, it's just a hobby. No, it's not a hobby. You're an entrepreneur. This is a business. If, you, if this is what you love doing, you have to put the most into what it is that you're doing. And by making you not a statistic of a failed business, but a successful business, means that you really have to think about what it is. The little boy at the lemonade stand really thought about what he wanted his stand to look like. It just wasn't a handwritten piece of paper. His marketing, his image, the actual structure that he used, he put real thought into it. So what you're doing is a serious endeavor. We don't want you to just take a flying leap in the beginning. We don't want you to jump in. We want you to be very, very strategic. At some point, you'll have to do that. You'll have to jump into the ocean. But there's a way that you can do it where you're being very strategic about what it is that you're doing. And this is when the planning 
comes in. And, and I really encourage, it may not feel comfortable for a lot of people, but if you take that passion that you have, what you love, and you start to put pen to paper, it becomes real. You start to really think about it. You, look, you, you have your vision and ideas. You're inspired. It's something that if you're up at 2 a.m. in the morning, you feel really great about being up at 2 a.m. in the morning. Uh, you design it. You go through. You do your research. And we've got access to free research portals and other information such as that. But you really start putting pen to paper of what that vision is, and that separates you from everybody else. And so as you're jumping off the cliff, the planning piece of it all is going to help you to be very strategic about what it is that you're doing. You're not just rushing in, but you're, taking, you're made a, making a concerted effort about what it is that you're doing. So as you jump off the cliff, just keep calm. <laughs> Um, and so you are at the right webinar, you are at the right live streaming, because we're going to be discussing all of these things, uh, counseling, seminars, research, resources, market intelligence. We're going to be looking at what elements of the business plan. We're going to talk about networking. So if it's just you, the individual that's out there, you need to be able to reach out to other people to help you with your business so that you're not an island on your own. Um, and some of the things that we do, we profile the businesses that we work with. Um, we also have a directory of businesses that we really try to promote. And there's all kinds of opportunities. And we're going to get into all of that. Some of the partners that we work with from federal, local, state, uh, we try within the BizLaunch program itself to really have key partners so that if you have a need as a business, we can point you to some of these organizations that are here locally, that are here regionally, that can assist you in your endeavors. So for the agenda today, um, we're going to jump into some business planning, ex um, some business planning pieces, like what do the bones of those look like. We're going to talk about regulations that you may be facing within your business. You need to be aware of regulations so that you're able to address those early on nothing like hearing from a regulator after you started your business. You want to make sure you do your homework before. And the next steps, what next? What do I do next after I've done all of this? And I just want to keep everybody apprised. If you see a note symbol, that means note this. You can note it musically, but just make sure you highlight this area here. And so I also want to emphasize that Free is a very good four-letter word. Why is free a very good four-letter word? It's because it means that you're not spending money on it. And you will see throughout the presentation, there are areas as an entrepreneur, there's so many resources available here in the United States for business owners that you can tap into. The one area or the two areas that I would spend money on, hire a very good attorney who understands your industry sector, and hire a CPA or an accountant that understands your industry sector. They will save you money in the long run. And note, there was a note there. There was a note. <laughs> there was a note. Lourdes over here is keeping me straight so that I stay on time. Keep on the time. <laughs> we only have one hour. Okay, so this is my golden business checklist. These are all of the things that you need to think about as you're starting your business. And we're going to start with planning. We're going to talk about financing, the money. Everybody needs money. We're going to go into your structure of your business, some of the federal, state, and local requirements, certifications that you can do, and then that next phase as you execute. So looking in at the planning phases, please plan. I beseech everyone to please plan. It might not feel comfortable, but at the end of the day, it's going to save you. And some of the elements of the business plan or your market research is understanding the industry sector that you're going into, understanding what your competition looks like, what your target market looks like. These are the things that you need to know backwards, forwards, upwards, downwards, because at the end of the day, these are the people that are going to help you with your business. So this is where the market research piece, and we have a wonderful relationship with our local library where you can access a lot of this data for free. And we actually show you how to do that. And that leads us into the business intelligence. You really have to know if you're exporting, 
You have to be all over what's going on in the federal sphere. How are our trade agreements? How are things changing? How are different countries changing if they get new prime ministers or presidents? And you have to be aware of this because at the end of the day, this could impact your business. The way you start your business isn't always necessarily the same as your business grows. And so business intelligence and market research is very important. Also, nowadays, your business needs to be on social media. I don't want to hear anybody tell me that's for the kids because it's actually for everybody. Everybody's on it. Everybody has a phone. 51% of online consumption or things that are bought online, 51% are done in the United States. So you really have to have a presence online. If you're not online, people don't realize or don't know or won't be able to find you. And I think that's a change that's going on. We'll also get into some financials. How much, if you need uh, lending, how much do you need? Do you want to look at crowdfunding, that type of thing? And so the business plan in and of itself, it needs to be feasible. It needs to be something that you have a background in or an expertise in. It can't be, I cannot cook everybody, so Tara is not starting a restaurant. I can't do it. I would love to, don't get me wrong, but if, if I went to a bank, they would look like, Tara, have you ever cooked? And it's like, no. So you want to do something that makes sense given your background, your history. Um, if you don't have that background in history and something that you love to do, I encourage you to get involved. Um, I had a business that wanted to open up a coffee shop, and they had had a coffee shop in Italy. And they, a very famous, successful one right outside, right in Rome. Um, and they came here, and I said, you might want to go and, and try because the U.S. is different. And they did that, and they ended up buying the coffee shop uh, as they were in there. The owners of the company loved them so much and knew that they wanted to bring a little bit of Italy to the United States. So there are always ways around it, and you can always educate yourself and, and be able to jump in. But make sure that the idea that you have is feasible, that it's detailed. If you are circumventing or trying to go around the corner on things, that's very, you know, you want to make sure that you're as detailed as possible. Your target market cannot be everybody. That's a note this, that's a warning. If it's everybody, then you need millions of dollars <laughs> to be able to fund the initiative. So be as detailed and really understand what it is that you're getting into. Competition is a huge thing. When people tell me they have no competition and they smile at me, beads of sweat actually drip down because I know that if there's no competition, then why are you doing it? You really need to have a healthy, competitive arena that you're entering. It's easier for you to get a little bit of that market share than it is for you to create market share. Just think about that. In creating a market share, you have to brand. You have to spend money on advertising. You have to do a lot of networking. So really think about that. Make sure that your competition is alive and healthy and they're doing well. If they're not doing it, you have to question, why isn't it being done? Um, 20 or more pages is typically what the business plan looks like to really dig down deep into what it is that you're doing. Some, depending on the industry sector, may be more or less. Um, it takes, what it does with the thinking and the process of putting the, what I like to call the meat with the potatoes, is it's minimizing that risk as you're jumping off the cliff. It's helping you to really think through what it is that you're doing. Um, it can be written for yourself, and I always tell everybody, write a business plan for yourself. If you're leasing space, the landlord wants to know that you've thought it through, and it may be written slightly different than the way you've written it for yourself. And it also can be for a banker if you're getting a loan. Um, so anybody usually that you contract with um, where you need help or assistance, loans, lease, that type of thing, they're going to want to see a copy of your plan. Also investors. Um, people want to know that you've really thought it through. It's not just an idea. Um, they also want to see that you have passion about what it is that you're doing. But they also want to know that you've done your, um, you've done your homework with it. And also making sure that you have the management expertise. You can also buttress this by hiring people that are also in the field or thought leaders in the field that can also help you. An advisory board of people that maybe you don't have to pay but are thought leaders that can be part of your organization that you can tap into if you have a question. That's very impressive to somebody that's 
looking to invest in you, that there are other people of like mind that are in it with you and it's not just you alone. And then also, one thing that people forget to do is the marketing plan. Please do not forget that. Marketing dollars really cost a lot, and so you want to be able to make sure that if you're going to a conference, if you're going to an event, what is your return on investment? How are you uh, making sure that you're maximizing what it is that you're getting back? All right. So I'm just not going to tell you all these things. Like you need to do your homework. You need to do what it is that you need to do and not provide resources. And note, there's a note right there. <laughs> there's a musical symbol. You can hear it. <laughs> So we have, and when you get the, um, the slides, there are hyperlinks to free resources that are available to you. Arlington Central Library, you'll be able to connect to some of the premium websites. If you're here in the area, your key is using your library card, um, and that can range from Montgomery County, D.C., on into Virginia. We have reciprocity with that, those areas within the region. So you literally can just go online and be able to put, pull up demographic information, industry information, market research data, on and on. And we actually have a webinar where we talk about, about that area. Also, if you're interested in looking at space in Arlington, that's one thing we provide here in Arlington for you for free. Um, if you're interested in locating or finding a co-working space to retail space, we can actually pull a list for you um, from CoStar. And also GMU or George Mason University through their School of Public Policy has market research industry stats that would cost you between $800 to $1,000. They provide that for you for free. You can go to the school, look up that industry information, save it on a flash drive, and you've got what the industry market is doing. And these are all stats and things that you can then put into your business plan. That is priceless, my friends, priceless. What did I say? In starting your business, don't spend a lot of money. Spending money doesn't make it better. It means that the money's gone. What you want to do is hold on to your money and then spend it in key places and be very strategic. Um, also, we have tons of free networking opportunities, and there are free events and free training that's coming up. I, I highly recommend um, there are several events. If you please like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter. We're going to try to share as much of that information with you as possible. And so I want to dig a little deep. Um, typically, people that are doing what they love may not necessarily love marketing. Myself and Lorna, we love marketing, and we're trying to get Jackie, who's doing our social media, that I think she loves marketing too. But we want to share with you. And, and typically, you know, you know it when you see it. You know when a company does a really, really good job with marketing because it looks like an apple, it looks refreshing like an apple, but it's different. It's got its own, maybe it's customer service. Maybe it's the fastest that's out there with the latest material and information. But you know what it looks like. So we're going to delve a little bit into the marketing aspect of it all. Now, this also means, as a, as a marketing person, you have to think about your clients and how do your clients receive information. Are they on LinkedIn? Are they on Twitter? Are they on Facebook? Are they on different platforms, Instagram? Like if you're doing anything visual, you're on Instagram because you're taking photos of food, if you're taking photos of clothing, if you're, if you're meeting with certain people within an industry and you use different hashtags, that type of thing. Really understand where your clients are and you be there. One recommendation that I would make is even if you're not going to be on a particular platform and your name is very important to you, save that name. You can go to a website, namecheck.com, which you can see here, um, and you can go and see which platforms your name is available on. And I would do that early on, and I would go ahead and sign up using that name so that you have it, um, and if it means a lot to you as, as you brand and as, as people are identifying with you. And a lot of things on social media are free. Uh, you can do a lot of things organically. But that is changing, whereas if you do some paid, a lot of it on, um, we're finding on Twitter, 
and Facebook is very affordable if you sponsor an ad and you can highly target who sees those tweets, who uh, sees those Facebook posts. And it's all done on what people, it's kind of scary, <laughs> but it's where people have identified their interests and things that they like to do. And so these agencies want you to be able to reach out to your customer. So if you pay a little bit and you can figure out as part of your marketing dollars and your marketing budget, what makes the most sense? When do my clients access information? What times of the day? What are the best times of the day to post? And have that as part of your strategy so that you're managing your message. Um, there's also still traditional advertising. I would say what you want to do is to go to, uh, if you're doing print media, to be in a highly visible place where you know your target market is going to see what you're doing. Whether it's advertising in the front or the back, or if it's next to a special, you know, you're in a special supplement. But with those traditional advertising dollars, you want the biggest bang for your buck. So whatever you spend it on, you have some kind of tracking mechanism so that you can know how effective that marketing tool was for you. And if it's not, and you spend a lot of money, don't repeat. Those marketing people that sell you advertising, they're amazing. Think, <laughs> they do a really great job, and then you feel kind of guilty for not advertising. But if it didn't work for you, don't go back. You know, be, but be very deliberate when you do your social, um, when you do your traditional advertising. Also, if you have a question about your target market, and you want to know more about what are the things that they need, sometimes we come from the perspective that I'm going to create this pit widget, and everybody's going to love my widget, or I'm going to contract to the government and I'm gonna tell the government what they need. Whereas if you communicate to these people and you talk to me and you say, hey Tara, what is economic development doing? What are their needs? I know what my issues are. <laughs> and I can tell you what those issues are. And then if you create something based on what I told you, oh my God. So you may wanna do surveys and some market research. It could be a matter of just picking up the phone, standing on a corner, doing like little mini surveys that are in places, such as that. So that way you're minimizing, what did we talk about earlier? You're minimizing your risk. You're making sure that whatever you're executing, you've really thought it out. And you're just not doing things just because you think, now you have this survey, getting, receiving their information directly from somebody that's telling you what you need to do. And then you can tweak and work your business plan accordingly. And so I talked a bit about paid versus free. Um, I think I had mentioned it. You also want to make sure that when you do pay, you do get a bang for the buck. But that bang of the buck can also equate to photos, to videos, to anything. Think puppies and kittens and kids and babies. You know, I worked with somebody in childcare, and they had no pictures of babies. And you know what? We all melt when we see a baby. Come on, y'all. Make sure that you know and understand what evokes emotion. And you want to be positive. You want to have a positive branding image. Um, and you also need to keep in mind that you need six touches of a brand before somebody recognizes what that brand is. If you do one expensive touch, but it's not followed up by anything, that touch is not as meaningful as if you keep with the consistency and the branding and how it goes out. It all has to have the same look feel. Like Nike, you know Nike when you see Nike. It's a swoosh. You know, uh, I could go in, I could, I could be anywhere in the world and I see that and I know what that is. You're building your brand new business and what you love and so you don't want to change those images. You want to use the same image over and over and consistently. Okay. So I'm not going to just leave you out there. What did I talk about? I can't believe there's not a note on here. But we have listed some of the um, more popular websites that have free access to data and resources that you can use for your business. So of course I have the Biz Launch page is right up there. Can't help myself. Have to advertise. Have to brand. Right. Um, but we have SBA for IRS. The IRS has amazing free tools amazing free resources for you all. Um, there's also sample business plans. If you text, email, send us notes, we could send you a copy of a business plan that we did ourselves. We just don't tell you to do things and we not do them ourselves. We've done them ourselves 
had subject matter experts look at it to make sure it was feasible and detailed and everything, and we could share that information with you. Also, I have the link to the how to make an appointment with the librarian, and um, also on procurement training. And we'll we'll jump into a bit of what PTAP does a little later on. So just so you can see, this is a copy of our website where we blog about our businesses. We talk about different topics. Um, we have a list of events, our biz launchments and y'all checklists, and all of that. Okay. So as we're moving forward, this lunchtime is going fast, everybody. <laughs> to finance or not to finance? That's a huge, huge question that we get a lot. And what I like to tell people is, you know, you have to be, just think of yourself, um, and I think of certain billionaires and other people that are in the world today, and most of them are rich not because they're spending a lot of their money. Let me say that again. <laughs> they're not rich because they're not spending all of them. They're being very strategic with the money that they receive. But they do need money to finance endeavors as they're looking forward. So what you want to do, and you have to understand this, I was a banker in a former life, and what you have to do is when you go to the bank, you go to them when you are proactive and you don't need them. That's when you go see them because as soon as you're desperate and you need them, they won't give you the money. <laughs> you want to go to them on your terms, and you want to have the funding up hand. So if you are awarded a contract, you want to be able to respond to that contract by, say, having a line of credit. Line of credits are great. You get them. They're there. They're in the name of the business. You're separating yourself from business in the name of the business. You tap into it. I need um, – some uh, marketing or I want to go to a finance, to a conference, tap into it, pay it back. And you have it so that it's always there for you, but you have it so that if anything comes up, you can still do, you can still do your endeavor. So the answer to that is, and that font size isn't quite screaming because it's not all caps, but it sort of is. And then note that. Please get the money that you need when you don't need them. And start to begin to build the credit. This is a recommendation, but to build the credit for the business and that it's sep you're starting to like separate yourself from the business as, as you move forward. And we'll talk a little bit about that. There are a variety of different types of finance options that you could do. There's traditional financing where you um, are going to the bank and you're lending based on collateral that you have, whether it's your home or a boat or some type of property, a stock or a bond, um, and you go through through that process. Uh, and I should say in 2017, banks are now really jumping back in to do business with small businesses. I've met with several businesses here in the area and they, they are all in. And many, many banks want to be the community bank. Even if they have large names, they want to be known as a community bank, and the credit unions are also a great, um, their rates on some of the traditional financing are probably competitive, if not a lot less than some of the larger, larger banks. So things to consider as you're doing that. Also, SBA lending, just to touch on that a little bit, the SBA, the small business, the U.S. Small Business Administration doesn't do direct lending only in disaster, in times of disaster. So they will lend, um, they will actually be a co-guarantor for your loan. So you would still need to go to a traditional bank that does SBA lending, and they would do all the underwriting, and they package it up, and they send it to the SBA. So it's in a sense, it's as if the federal government is guaranteeing your small business for a loan, and as a startup, it's, it's sometimes more of a challenge to get a loan, but they're serving as that guarantor. So they make it, some of the rates are a little bit higher, but you're actually able to get the lending that you need. Um, many people use this third bullet, which is family and friends and credit cards. I don't know if I put credit cards in there, but they do their own self-funding. And actually in this launch, we're seeing a lot of that. A lot of people do that, and that is an option for you. I would be very strategic. So if you're working with family and friends, you also have to think about what if the business goes bust. 
and uh, you want to keep them your friends, certain people friends, and certain people family members in your lives. So that's something really to consider. A lot of folks are going into the crowdfunding space now. And so they're looking at different tools online where you can raise money. Uh, Kiva Zip is a great program for uh, startup entrepreneurs because you pay it back, but there's no, there's no um, fees. There's nothing associated with it. Uh, Kiva Zip is the type of crowdfunding platform um, where it's made up of investors who just want to invest in entrepreneurship. And they just want to know that they helped you to get started and uh, give a small business or an entrepreneur an opportunity. So when you look at the crowdfunding sites, you want to be really, really aware of what the fees are if you were to cash out, if you weren't able to raise the amount that you wanted to raise. So really think it through and see if it makes sense for you. I know there's several people who are doing it, but you also want to make sure that you understand what that, that process is. Um, which leads me also into seed um, funding, uh, investors, people that want to invest in your company. Um, with venture capitalists and with investing, you want to make sure that you're comfortable and you're okay with people uh, taking a percentage of what it is that um, your business is grossing. So if you're comfortable, I have a lot of new entrepreneurs that aren't as comfortable with that because they're, they're like, but it's our idea and we're doing this and, you know, we only want to give 10%. Well, an investor is going to want a lot more than 10%. They're going to really want, because they're giving you seed capital or seed funding, um, say $300,000, which is a significant amount of money, they want to make sure that if you do really, really well, that they're going to get a percentage of that. So some things I would always have that person that I said to make sure you hire and hire early on that attorney can keep you out of trouble with any kind of lease, investment, anything that you get into, they can review those documents before you sign. Caveat emptor, make sure that you understand what kind of um, investment if you're going that way with VCs. And so I always tell everybody, as an entrepreneur, if you're doing any kind of financing or doing any kind of investments, these are the things that people are looking for. And we call it the five C's of credit. And that really is capacity, capital, collateral, conditions, and character. All of these elements are what the banker is thinking about as they're determining whether or not they finance you. And capacity is the most critical. That is your ability to repay the loan. And they're also looking to see, are you able to repay this to us if you fail? Okay? So they want to know that you have the wherewithal of whatever endeavor it is that you're doing that you're able to pay them back. And you, for yourself, you want to make sure that you as the individual that you have that ability. Because if you don't, you might want to wait a little bit, save up a little bit of more money, you know, um, do some other things, and then go back to it. But that's the, the biggest one. Capital. Bankers, investors also ask the question, how much have you personally invested in this business? They want to know if they're investing and they're putting themselves at risk that you have as well. And they want to know what that percentage is. And it can range from as low as 5% to as high as 40%. So usually it's somewhere in the middle, like if you've invested between 20, 25, that's kind of like a sweet spot, then they know that you're fully vested in it. Collateral, those are your guarantees, those are stock, house, car, um, so that in case the endeavor were to fail, you're able to um, get that, uh, they're able to cash you out. They don't want to do that, they don't want your property but they just want to make sure just in case. Because you have to think, you're doing what you love and you have passion around it, but you also want to make sure that you're being very diligent and really thinking things through. And please, please be, be honest with yourself. If you have a weakness, there's no time right, like right now to think that you, <laughs> that you don't. You do. Embrace it. And then bring on the people that have the key skills so that you can minimize your risk. So, so don't be thinking things that aren't true. Be really self-actualized so you can work through it. Um, conditions, what's the intended purpose of the loan? What are you going to use it for? Some banks don't like to lend to restaurants because there's more risk. Some banks don't like to lend to government contractors. 
you need to make sure that you're apples to apples with who you're going to, and you can do research on the banks or on those institutions, really get to know who's on their board of directors, what type of loans have they lended to. You have every right to ask them the questions, because they're going to get a lot of personal information from you. So you make sure that you have your list of questions for them and to see, okay, you say you do small business lending, how many loans and who have you made those loans to? So you want to make sure that, you, that they are who they appear to be when you, when you go to meet them. And also be very careful about what you sign. There's a lot of predatory lending that we're starting to hear about that's going on across the country. If somebody can get you cash quick, red flag, no sense, warning, if it's quick and easy, it's going to be hard to get out. And, you know, we had somebody that had done a $20,000 quick loan and then ended up having to pay back $300,000. So really be careful with the things that you sign and you do. And character is always important. Character is the image that you are projecting to those that you're doing business with. So if you go to the bank and you're asking them for something, come to them correct. Come to them with your questions. Come to them dressed in your professional best because you are representing your business. If you're in IT or if you're doing something, you know, it's fine to be like an IT. Like make sure that you're in the role but also you're presenting yourself and you're also knowing your industry and knowing what it is. It's your character. You want people to want to do business with you. So when you go out, you have to be in complete control. And that really sometimes makes the difference between whether somebody will lend to you or not. Sometimes it's just the character that you present to them. Okay, that's it for financing. That's it for my lectures on financing. We're going to roll into the various types of business structures. Now, I have to say I do not pretend to be an accountant, nor do I play one on TV. I'm just going to provide options and where you can go to get more information. And as you can see, there's a note there to make sure that you chat with your accountant who's in your industry sector as well as your banker and others, your attorney that are in these places that know your personal situation to make sure, depending on what you gross per year, which structure makes the most sense. Um, sole proprietorship, it's just you. You can use your own social security number, quick and dirty, you're in business, voila. Partnership, if there's more than one person that's involved, as a sole proprietorship, it's 100% ownership. So you, if you're bringing on other people, you may want to look at forming a general partnership with really, and when you bring in partners, please understand what everybody's roles are. It's always great in the beginning, oh, I'm going to be the president, you're going to be the vice president, this person's going to be the treasurer, and this is what we're going to do, right? As soon as money starts rolling in, that's another, why is that person president? What about me? I'm the treasurer, I'm doing all the money stuff. So you want to make sure that roles are clearly defined because things change as the dynamics of the business changes. And so if you're doing a general partnership and you have a partnership or a teaming agreement, you want to make sure that it's very everybody's role is clearly defined. There are exit strategies. If one person gets ill, what is the other person's family going to take over? Like really be very clear in the beginning. I can't emphasize that enough. But there's former paperwork that you can fill out that binds it. And it's just not your word saying, well, I'm going to be this person and I'm going to get 51% and this person's going to, you know, really make sure that, and the partners have their own attorneys who look at their own agreements to make sure that there's a meeting of the minds. And you do this early on when things are great. Um, the LLC, what's starting to happen with the LLC is that you're beginning to separate Tara, the individual, from Tara's boutique. And so what happens is your state, well, you'll fill out the paperwork for your state, which begins to separate the individual from the business. You can, as an individual, you can be your own registered agent for the business. But it's starting to, it's like a marriage, and there's some legal things and some tax implications and how things are looked at. But it also, some people like being an LLC because of that separation. Not 100%. We're, we live in a litigious society, so people can still sue you, 
There's more risk if you're sole proprietor because you're an individual and you haven't made that separation. So sometimes they can go, uh, if somebody decides that they want to sue you, they can go after all your assets. This provides you some protection. And then there's also, you can incorporate your business, which is the next level. You can decide to be in there's three types of incorporations in the Commonwealth of Virginia. You can be an S Corp, a C Corp, or a benefit corporation. Um, that way it depends on how you grow and how you distribute money and if you sell shares. So you want to figure out exactly what makes the most sense as you begin. Um, typically you can, um, this is the kind of trajectory that most businesses will work towards. And if you're interested in doing any kind of general partnership, LLC, or incorporation, you'll go to the FCC, the State Corporation Commission's website. You can search to make sure that your name is available before you sign up. Nobody else has your name. And then you can start the process online or you can fill out the paperwork. They'll send you some temporary articles of incorporation and then um, several weeks later they'll send you the official. But this is the process of figuring out what type of structure that you want to be. Now, a little bit before you do this, you'll want to go to the Internal Revenue Service, IRS's website, um, or you can call them up on the form, phone and do an SS4. The SS4 form is where you get, if you're incorporated or if you're an LLC, you need to have an employer identification number. This is pretty much your social security number for the business. And so you can get that and then use that number to either be, to do your um, LLC or your incorporation. It's a really fast process, very simple um, and easy to do. And mainly you'll need to get an EIN if you're an LLC or if you're hiring employers. And if you go to the, to the link on the website, they'll let you know the full list of when you need to get an EIN. And also, on the federal side, if you're getting a commercial or retail location, your location has to be ADA compliant. That's an issue that we see with a lot of folks as they're building out their space. They may have problems with permitting because the doors aren't opening correctly or wide enough. So you, this is um, federal regulation that could impact your business if you're getting physical space. So that's on the federal side. On the state side, I mentioned the SS the SCC, which is the State Corporation Commission, if your industry sector is regulated, so say you're in construction, you're an architect, um, you want to do home health care, or you want to do a child care office, you would go through DPOR, the Department of Professional and Occupational Regulation. Basically, if there's any certification or testing, they will walk you through. They, they have a great website. It's very transparent. You just go there and make sure that you have your um, straight regulations. Usually you'll know if you need it, if you're doing anything um, with the state and it's the industry sector, we even question on the local and make sure that you got your certification. Um, you also keep in mind that if you're hiring workers or hiring employees and you need to get unemployment insurance and things of that nature, the Virginia Employment Commission and the Virginia Workers' Compensation there are two steps that you will need to do in getting in touch with them, and we have their websites here. Uh, local requirements, and this is typical no matter if you're in Arlington or you're in South Beach or any, any point in Seattle, uh, you want to make sure that the use, if you're in your home, you have what we call a home occupation permit. And that really says you're, it's free. It says your home is your home you're operating your business out of it. You need to have an occupancy permit. If you're in a commercial space, you'll get a CO or what we call a certificate of occupancy. Basically, it says that in your retail space or in your commercial space, you are allowed to do a particular use. So if you're manufacturing, typically in any given city, no matter where you are, if you're manufacturing, you want to make sure that you're in a district that allows for manufacturing. So even if you find a space and it's amazing, keep in mind, caveat emptor, do not sign on the lease until you talk to your zoning group to make sure that you can do the use in that space. I can't begin to tell you people that we come across who sign leases and they can't do the use. 
Now, the leases you sign up for for an indeterminate amount of time, <laughs> so make sure. You might have to change what it is that you want to do in the space. We don't want that to happen. So we can actually help you to determine if you can do the use in the space. Also, the next thing you'll do is you'll get your business license. Your business license, no matter where you are, is actually tied to how you pay your local taxes. And in some jurisdictions, they give you a time frame. They say in 75 days of opening, you have to get your license. In Arlington, as soon as you start, you cut on your life, you have to get your business license. So make sure, and that's done through our um, Commissioner of Revenue's office. So make sure that you get that business license. And Arlington is also tied to business tangibles. So those are things like um, uh, things such as your computer equipment or cameras or anything that you use. There's a business tangible tax. And also you're doing business as name. Your trade name is also filed through the Commissioner of Revenue's office. So these are the three steps that you do, business license, tangibles, and trade name. Similar to the state, for your trade name, you can search to make sure nobody else has it on a local level. Um, and then that way you can apply and, and you can get that. If you're dealing with food, if you're a restaurant and people are eating, you have to make sure that people have a food license, um, health, health food license. Um, it makes sure that you understand how hot things need to be, how cold they need to be, how they're stored, what you do with your hair, all that. You actually take a little uh, test for that. But we also have information on if you want to start a food truck or a mobile food business. Um, and how that process works um, with receiving the hack license. Now, I wouldn't, like I said before, I don't just give you the information and think that that's it, we're one and done, but here is the link on, on the Arlington portal that you'll need to do in order to get your um, certificate of occupancy. You can also search on there for home occupancy as well, and you can do all that online. We in Arlington like to be virtual. You don't have to come into the buildings like you used to. You can do it all online. That should be a note this. <laughs> business license through our Commissioner of Revenue's office right. and business tangible. <laughs> we have all of these links that are available for you. And trade name. Wanted to show you that I, I got all these things too. Uh, health department, we got that. Now, certifications, I alluded to this earlier, certifications. There are federal certifications that you can receive. These are very sexy, and people really, really like them. But there's also, um, our state also has certifications, and I encourage you not only to think federal government and federal contracting opportunities, think about the states and the local people, because we need goods and services too, and sometimes the process is, is easy to jump in so that you can get past performance with us, and you can use that past performance to also chase federal opportunities. So uh, there are four certifications. There's the AA, small business, small disadvantaged business, hub zone, and there's a women-owned certification that you can get, otherwise known as 8N. Uh, I've got the link here that will take you to all of those different types of certifications that you can receive on the federal end. You can read up. If you're eligible, I would apply. There's another portal that I'm going to show you in another slide, which talks about, and, and this goes back to what we were talking about before, but being very strategic in on what you're doing. So making sure that you know what the opportunities are, you know what the process is, and how long it's going to take you to be certified. This should all be part of your business planning and you, you map it in. If you're a new entrepreneur, the 8A program is probably good as a word of thumb to be around for a few years before you get that certification. So you build up your pipeline, and then you go after opportunities that way. You're very strategic. But you can also follow all government's budgets online. So you can see where the federal government is going to emphasize and do a lot of their spending. And just based on current events, I would say a lot of things are going on at DOD, uh, at the Pentagon, and some of the uh, cybersecurity. There's a lot of opportunities. But there's also transportation and things on the local level. So we work very closely with our friends at the Virginia Department of Small Business and Supplier Diversity. 
If you're interested at all in doing business in Virginia and you don't necessarily have to be from Arlington or you don't necessarily have to be from Virginia, you can definitely take a look at their different portals. They have a certification called SWAM, which is Small Women and Minority Owned um, Businesses. And so you can have a dual certification. You can be small minority, small woman owned, or you could just be small. And as you're doing business with different state agencies, which also include Arlington, you can, with that, uh, use that to compete on different opportunities. So for procurement, if you want to know about what Arlington's buying and selling, you can go visit our website. Also, uh, EVA stands for E Virginia. What goods and services is the state purchasing? And on the federal level, I highly, highly encourage for free for you to sign up for SAM, System Awards Management System, SAM.gov. It has all types of opportunities where you can do sole sourcing of up to $2 million. So say Tara works for the federal government and I'm throwing a, a big event and I need to purchase widgets for the event. Instead of me going through the formal process, I can go directly to your company. I can call you up, but you have to be in the system, okay? So that folks, and it also includes large businesses, so they can also partake of SAM to find you. So I always tell people, make sure that you're on SAM.gov because you don't want to let any opportunity go by. Also, FBO, FedBizOps, is the federal clearinghouse. Every kind of opportunity that the federal government has, whether it's Homeland Security, uh, whether it's um, Health and Human Services, Education, everybody goes through the FBO portal. So I would take a look, go on there, see what the opportunities are. But I definitely encourage you as you're starting out to do SAM back up. Okay, now I alluded to people that you need to pay for um, and that they will save you money in the long run. One of our most popular supporters is SCORE. We have five mentors that are here. They're all amazing. They're all wonderful. And I highly, highly encourage you to contact us to set up an appointment with SCORE. They can help you. They can mentor you. Uh, they can meet with you. And that's for free. A lot of our SCORE counselors have been thought leaders in their industry sector. They run companies. They've been there. They've been consultants. Uh, some have founded Fortune 500 companies, and they're these amazing people. So you can tap into them and have them as your advisor, and you can use that in your business plan. And they work with several of our businesses, so I highly encourage um, coming and meeting with one of our counselors. Also, to start out, I found that the bar associations are amazing. Many of the bar associations receive attorneys from some of the top law firms from around the country. This is part of their giving back. The price that they charge you, as I'm losing my voice, is much less. <coughs> Station break. <laughs> Commercial. Commercial break. <coughs> is much less than they would charge you originally. So I highly encourage looking at doing the bar association. Also, I found accountants world to be great because they can give you specific industry sector accountants. It's going apples to apples. It's not somebody that does accounting on the side or a friend of a friend who knows a friend. It's an accountant that understands your, your industry. <clears throat> okay. I talked so much I started coughing, but now it's time to execute. You can execute, you can take your paper plane, or <laughs> Laura forgot. Or you can execute more like this. Big old shuttle, big boom. And I say I like paper planes, but if you want to execute, execute this way. And how do we do it? These are some of my tips. Recognize the note that's right there, but make sure that you plan. Whatever you do, planning. If planning's not your stick, help somebody to help you plan. You're a mentor. Create a business <clears throat> from an accessible, existing market. Yay, competition. I think we alluded to that. Make sure you get the money, money, money. Location, location, location. If it's an area that's very popular and you need to be there, I wouldn't sidetrack and go into that corner. I'd go into the location that you need to go into. Make sure that you're practicing great credit so that when you need the money, you can get it. 
have a fabulous team that you have. I love using the word fabulous. You want a fabulous team, not just a regular team, but a fabulous team of uh, attorneys, CPAs, and bankers. And make sure that you keep good records. Um, if somebody that you've hired doesn't do you well, you are still responsible because you're the business owner. Many times you can't go back. You can maybe sue them later, but the, the regulators, the folks are going to come to you. Ask for help. You are not an island. This is one webinar. This is one live stream. We are here for you. We don't go away. Make sure you don't isolate yourself. Network. Get out there. Meet people. Uh, meet thought leaders. Go to conferences that make sense. That will inspire you, but also be very strategic with it. Network with influencers, advisors, group or mentors. I think I beat that with a dead horse. Brag about what you do. Feel free. Nobody else is going to brag about you than you are. If you talk about the wonderful things that you're doing and you say it a lot of times, then other people will start to mention you the same way. You can't go in and say, well, you know, I've got this kind of widget that I'm doing. and I think, No, I've got a widget that I have to sell, and I'm going to sell it, and I'm going to be great, and I'm so excited. That wins every day. <laughs> Use social media, everybody. Get on there. If you tweet us, we will tweet you back. If you mention, we will mention something. We will help promote. Get out there. And visit us in this launch and our partners as much as you need. We are a free resource for you. So make sure that you take advantage. And then right here, the last bullet, make sure you repeat continually. We love to get into habits that we do. We can kind of get stuck in stuff. But if you repeat all of these things, I suffice to say, I think you'll be successful. And uh, here's a lovely picture of Lorda, myself, and Mo. <laughs> Jackie, we need to add you on here. But this gives you our contact information, our website. Reach out to us. We are here. And then last but not least, we're right up for Q&A. I was trying to make it for 10 minutes to make sure <laughs> that we had enough time for Q&A. So, Janine, I'm going to reach out to you to see if there's anybody on the line with a question. Hey, Tara, great information. Um, we do have a question. Um, Julie would like to know, where can you get an EIN from? Where, what's, the, what's the resource to go to oh. for that information? Yes, that is through the Internal Revenue Service. So if you go to irs.gov and in the search field put in EIN, or you can also put in SS4, they will give you a phone number. You can also do it online. All right, and one kudos is uh, Mary Sue, is she has got all these steps in order. She's just working on fleshing out her marketing plan and clarifying her target market. And if you are in the same boat as Mary Sue, we just want to remind you to uh, make sure to use our resources if you want a second eye or if you've reached a point where you um, don't know where to go, please feel mm -hmm. free to use our resources. Oh, totally. And I like our resources because they are free, everybody, no cost to you, <laughs> just your time, <laughs> which we hope to maximize the return on investment. And I don't think anybody else has any questions. If you do, please raise your hand or shoot them out to me in the chat box. Oh, one more just came in. Can BizLaunch help us identify small business insurance brokers? Yes. Actually, through our friends from SCORE, uh, have a list of different types of insurance brokers. It depends on the industry, but they try to do it by industry. Um, um, so, yes, through our partners. So definitely reach out to us. Shoot us an email. Lord, if we could go back. Um, we, will, we will investigate and be able to send you the link. All right. And um, another one that just came in. Um, it's asking if you don't have an office space address but want to use um, a home address for the SAM.gov, um, mm -hmm. they're getting rejected because they're using a P.O. box. Um, what other options do you have? Do you have any insight on that, Tara? Yes. Um, something that you don't want to use your home address. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's some things that you can do now where a lot of the co-working spaces that are in the area um, they will allow you, it's a slight fee, I don't think it's a lot, but you can use their address like to pick up mail and to have it, because many times we, we are fearful, you don't want to have your personal information out there too much and 
with the passing of the, the stuff yesterday with security and safety and things online, you want to be really careful about what you put out there. So I would definitely say uh, check into some of the co-working spaces here in Arlington. There's 1776, there's Eastern Foundry, um, there's uh, Link Locale. And all of these have a potpourri based on the needs and uses of the entrepreneurs. So they have some virtual offices with the opportunity for you to be able to use their space. If you don't want to use their space and want to be completely virtual, you can do that. Um, I encourage that um, when you reach a certain point to maybe do a co-working space. You can even do one day a week or one day a month, um, and you can negotiate with them on the fees for that because that way it, sometimes it, it gets you out of the home office and gets you out and amongst other people, which may inspire you but also it gives you a sense of protection as well. And a follow-up. So stand back up does not allow PO boxes. A follow-up to that question is the CAGE office said um, that they can't use a shared office space. Do you know if that's true or how, would you have any recommendations Ooh. for that? I, um, hmm, that's something that I haven't heard. I can also check into that with some of our folks on the federal side, I can reach out to um, the SBA office and ask them that. Okay, so we can definitely get back to this person. We um, will definitely get back to you because I want to make sure um, that we get that right information to you. All right, I think that's it from our end. Oh, great. Well, let me thank everybody out there. We really appreciate you all being there. We appreciate you all as entrepreneurs. Um, we don't go away, so feel free to reach out to us. And I really thank you for, for sharing your, your lunch with us. Time is everything. And we wish you all the luck in all of your endeavors and starting your business. And we look forward to seeing you all soon. Thank you, and have a great day.